Hello everybody, Reggie Time here, and in just a minute we're going to be looking at some fun hands I played versus some absolute whoppers on the 20NL iPoker Streets. Before we get into that, please don't forget to hit the like, the subscribe, share, leave comments, all of those things. Even if the comments are negative about me, just do it. You know, even if even if you want to just I don't know, tell me to man up and grow up and, and like playing tougher games, do wherever, do wherever you want to say, just leave, just leave your comments, because apparently it is meant to help the video, so I don't fucking know, if it does, great, if it doesn't, then it doesn't really matter very much, but just hit the like anyway, because it's quite gratifying to see videos get like double figure likes on just 100 views and things, um, so yeah, this week, since the last video, we've mostly been playing um, 20 L on the iPoker Street, uh, it's half term, and I wasn't expecting to make any videos this week, but um, because um, late last week, my wife got news that the young lady she cares for, her mum's care needs have changed, and she's now going into full-time um, daycare rather than the respite care that we provided and, and my sister-in-law provided. Uh, it's changed our working schedules, so... Um, so yeah, there's going to be maybe at least one, maybe two more, two more videos this week, and I'm going to have to try and play some more poker and make some more money from poker because, because my wife's lost the the hours. Um, I don't want her to have to do any more hours. She works for like a home care business and it's hard work, and she's she's turned fifty now. When was she born? Yeah, she's fifty one this year, my wife. So I don't really want her to go out knocking a pan out working at, at her age. I'd rather just. Um, do better at poker than I typically do and replace the income that way. Um, there's definitely leaks in my game that I can easily, easily fix. My mental game could be better than it. I, mean, I used to have a superb mental game. It's not as good as it used to be. Uh, that could certainly improve. My game selection, although it's good, could certainly improve. I probably, over the last 18 months or more, I probably put 200 hours plus into speed poker games that I just didn't need to be doing. I could just be using those two hours, putting them into games where I have a significantly higher expected hourly rate, significantly higher expected win rate, etc. So I'm not at all concerned that we're not going to be able to replace that income. It's just going to require me to be more professional than I've been and get into more situations like you're going to see in this video. Um, so I've been really extolling the virtues of game selection for a long time now i haven't always followed my own advice um but hopefully going forward this 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 news that um i'm going to need to slightly increase my poker income not by a huge amount because there's other ways we can we can we can um generate some income in some other ways so it doesn't need to all come from the tables but hopefully i can improve my income from the tables a little bit just to um, is the pressure on my wife more than anything because she's concerned that she's going to need to find more hours and I don't want her to. I, I want to step up to the plate and help her just like continue just working part-time and not having to go out work full-time at 51 years of age, um, which I think, fine, there's nothing wrong with that, of course. And maybe I'm being a little bit entitled, but we've, we've slipped into a lifestyle that we're really comfortable with and I don't want her to have to change her lifestyle too much. Um, I do... You know, like to act the like the old seventies, eighties husband type. You know, man who doesn't like his wife much, etc. But of course, I do. I love her to bits, and it's important that to me, it's important that she continues to just have a nice, pleasant work to life, should uh, work life balance. And if that means I need to play more poker and do things better, then that's just fine by me. It's what I'm supposed to be doing anyway. So, um, yeah. That's end of update for anyone who's remotely interested in my actual life. I know some of you are, and uh, some of my actual friends watch this. So yeah, um, I always like to give little life updates if, if and when they're required. But now we'll just get into the hands. And as I said, there are some absolute doozies in here. There's some belting hands. Um, none of them of particular strategic importance, I don't think, apart from the strategy of get yourself in good poker games and just try to play well. And so as you can see, this table here, we're starting. We've got a recreational player, 44 bigs, who's posted. We've got some kind of reg on the button. And then we've got this 78-22 guy in the small blind, who I think is going to be the main villain in this hand. Uh, so this guy's posted. Regular over limps, 
over a post. I mean, this is just what are you doing, mate? I mean, this guy's just putting dead money in. We should just be, I don't know, he wouldn't open limp the button. I mean, he's not a regular. He's got reggish type stats, 29, 21, but he's not. Ignore me. Ignore me. I didn't notice he had that stack size. So he's not a regular. He's just a recreational player who's got reasonable stats for a recreational player. And then we've got this guy in this small blind who makes it three blinds. Which obviously is not a size you want to be isolating from from the small blind when there's two people posting dead money. We bump it up to 12 blinds. He goes all in. I did say these weren't going to be um, super interesting strategically, didn't I? There's nothing to be said here other than call. And let's see what our opponent had. Um, seven deuce off suit. That's what he was rocking along with. And we just make the flush. And again, as I said, I'm not, there's nothing strategic to say about that hand other than that's particularly good service provided by the by the site, by this guy. And it's it's how you make money in poker. Not necessarily getting someone to whop it all in with 7-2 off, but getting engaged with players who will just do exactly that. Um, it's If you want a good win rate, you know, you've got to get out there and you've got to search for the guys who are going to help you have that good win rate, I guess. Um, here we have a table that isn't super great. We've got like a really, really, really dull reg. I mean, this guy's a reg in terms of the fact that he's tight. But um, yeah, it's an empty chair, isn't it? Then we've got like a 58 VPP here and a 38 VPP here. We raise the ace queen. We get three bets. Um, we just call. I don't think there's any reason to want to reopen the betting with a hand like ace queen suit, particularly against. Someone who's shaping up to be a recreational, but an aggressive recreational player. Uh, we flop ourselves a queen. He bets pretty large. We've got the back door flush draw too. We go nowhere. Turn his jack. And he's just all in for 72 bigs. I remember this hand. Um, and I actually genuinely think against most players... There are recreationals. This should just be a fold. Um, yeah, we've got top pair, top kicker in a three-bet pot. Um, there's going to be there's going to be a couple of hands similar to this, I think, or maybe not exactly like this, but where like these players, there's no reason to gamble with them in this way. I don't think. Sorry, just finishing my coffee. What it goes cold. There's just better ways to get the money. I mean, yeah, fine, we've got top pair, top kicker here. But when the turn comes to Jack, it's a three-bet pot. It's like, what, like, king-queen? Unless he's just, like, completely whopping off. Now, if this was against, like, a... And the last guy, somebody with, like, a 78 V-pip or something, he was clearly just mashing buttons. Well, this guy's 38, 20. Yeah, he's, he's, he's trying to do it off a little bit, but he only got, like, a 4% three-bet, which, again, small sample size, pretty irrelevant. But um, it just felt like the guy just had a really strong hand here, like aces, kings, um, something like that. I don't think he's got a set of jacks. I don't think set of jacks from these type of players bet that big on the flop when the queen when the queen hits. Uh, so I think the jack's basically a brick. Um, I mean, I guess he could have something like ace, x of clubs that would play this way. Maybe it's not a fold. But I remember at the time not liking it. It was un it was an unhappy call. Um. We did call, though, of course. Otherwise, why would the hand be in here? And we river what's very likely to not be the best hand. Uh, but he did have kings. And that isn't me being result-orientated. It just felt, I remember it in, time, in real time thinking, yeah, this guy's just got aces here. That's what I actually thought. I mean, like, oh, but we've got a block of two aces, blah, blah, blah. Um, Yeah. I wasn't happy with myself on that one. I'm glad we won the pot, of course. But, um. I'm just not sure we need to be against a regular, then we just have to do that. But a regular pro almost certainly wouldn't take that line. Uh, when recreational players take that line with that the double barrel in a three bet pot, I get they sometimes just punt it off. I just like ramming it all in pre with a bad hand or by um, like calling with a weakish hand, making top pair, then desperately trying to protect it, etc. By raising C bets. Those things I don't, you know, I think, yeah, fine, we have to we have to call off. But when someone's gone three bet, big C bet, over bet, jam turn, it's usually it's usually just what it says in the tin. It's usually the over pair. And even though we won the part, I was a little bit disappointed with 
um, with my play in that hand. On to the next one, we have two kings. You have a regular here. Um, mid 79, 8, and another recreational play in the blinds. Um, so we have the regular. And this is the guy I play with probably... There's only one player I play with more than this guy. Um, I think he's pretty solid. I think pretty sure he does really well in the games. Um, I think he's a little bit more theory based. He's not a crusher by any stretch in terms of like, oh, this guy just does things that makes my fucking head wobble in terms of like how good he is. Um, but yeah, he's not someone who wants to see your tables really. We three bet with the kings. We get the cold call from the 79 8. He four bets to 25 bigs. Um, I think when he does this, after this guy's cold called, he doesn't have any of the four bet bluffs he might have if it was a heads up pot. Had um had he got had the other like not called, he'd not called. This then starts to have some um four bet folds. And they're not many, but there be there will be some in there. Uh, I think when this guy cold calls, his four bet folds cease to exist. And only his value continues with four bets. Um if he's got aces, so be it. We're just in there with the kings. This guy doesn't seem to give a shit. He's coming along. And then, as expected, he came He came along too. Um, so let's see what the hands were. Ace, king off. Completely reasonable. Queen, seven suited. Not quite as reasonable. So basically, we're um, hoping... We're not it's not a flip, but we've got whatever we've got like thirty percent equity here. So it's seventy percent equity here. Uh, flip over this guy's seventy one bigs, which is a really pleasant situation to find ourselves in. Um, this dude's growing nearly dead. This guy's flopped well. He's got top pair and a flush draw. Um, this would be a stinker to lose. Um, ten on the turn, eight on the river, and it runs out dry. And we dragged down what was a. 270 big blind pot. Go Reggie. Here we have the ace queen off. We open to 2.5 bigs. We get a call from the 8239 guy. Um, we flop top pair. We bet. He calls. Turn Theoretically, it's a brick, but against these 8239 guys, I never know what, what a brick is and what a brick isn't. The guy could just have 6 9 here, ace 9, could have 9 4 suited. Um, I think we were ahead on the flop. We're probably still ahead now. Um, we bet he now min raises, and then you start thinking, oh shit, maybe I'm not ahead anymore. But how on earth are we folding? Um, we just call and just to hope the guy's bluffing and hope that nine hasn't somehow turned him two pair or a set or what have you. Rivers, that the brickiest of bricks, landed with such a thud it nearly cost a minor tremor in Dalton. Um, we check. He now bets half pot. And I guess the question here is like, do we have any raises? As min raise turn is half pot river. Like, we definitely beat some value here. He could probably have some worse ace X. We obviously beat bluffs, but do we beat enough value that we can raise now and get called? Um, and I guess that's the question. What do we think this player does? If he has a hand like ace nine here or six nine, I think if he has a set, he bets bigger. I think if he's like flopped a set and then slow played it or turned a set, I don't think he just bets half pot on the river. I suspect he's probably going to say a pot size bet or maybe even like an all in or something like that. Uh, so I think that two pairs going to be like top of his value range here. Um, but does he like raise turn and now call with a hand like ace 10? Um, I guess I decided he didn't. And I did just call. But I'm not sure. I thought about this for after the throw. I thought, could we have, could we have raised there? And he had the ace five off and I doubt he's calling. I doubt he's calling, but you know. When he, just when he went half pot river, it felt to me like we've probably got the best hand here. Obviously, I was never folding. It did cross my mind to shove. Shove for value from, I don't know, hands like ace 10 or 
A6, something like that. But it just in the end, it felt a little bit too thin. But I'm not sure if we could have got some more value there. Um, Queen 10 suited. Great. 76 slash 1 opening. And a 6, 7, 17 calling. We just call here because this guy, we've got a thousand hands on him and he's got a PFR of 1. So we don't need to be genius to figure out whereabouts in the, on the hand ranking grid this is. This is your hand ranking grid. Big square to the size of the table. And he's in this top corner here. He's just up here. He's basically got aces, kings, or ace, king. Uh, but we can crack that. So we're going to have a go at cracking it. And we flop ourselves a straight flush, which is nice. Um, we get dunked into. And we just call here. We want this guy to have like aces or kings with the king of clubs and just raise. Um, sadly, he doesn't. Turns a queen. This guy bets two bigs. We just call again, still hoping this guy might raise. Maybe he's turned a set of queens. He doesn't raise. And then River, this guy bets three bigs. Now we raise. And he calls. And he flopped the jack. I mean, this guy must just have had ace-king, I guess. Um, I guess it could only have been ace-king that he had. Maybe, who knows. But um, we could have maybe made some more money from this guy by raising earlier. But I really wanted, to, like, I wanted this guy in. I, I wanted this guy to, like, I wanted to give him a chance to, to do something <clears throat> to do something crazy with like an overpair plus a flush card. Maybe though, if he has got like aces or kings, I mean obviously he hasn't, but maybe if he did have aces or kings with the club specifically, he would have continued had we raised a flop. Um, so maybe that was just an elaborate slow play by me that I didn't need to do. But um, it was nice. Flopping straight flushes is fun. Here we have the ace king. We have an 85 slash 12 limping in. We have a... don't know how to describe this player. He's got my yellow tag. My yellow tag now is like... I've got my traffic light system. Green is... Uh, well, basically red is someone who I think is trying to play decent theory-based poker, pre-flop and post-flop. So therefore they have quite a few three bets. Yellow is someone who's trying to do that but has less three bets orange is just a, like a really tight shitty reg who never three bets green is just let's go light blue is um let really let's go and it's purple it's it's two things i think this might be one of the people who i chat with regularly i'm not going to reveal names um and it also means people who are too loose and aggressive now that isn't true about this guy but typically, my purple tag is for the people who are too loose and aggressive. And basically, that traffic light system just helps me pre-flop when I'm opening. Um, I will open white. If I look behind me and there's like nothing, that if there's no reds or purples, then I open wider than I should. If there's just yellows behind, I'd open probably um normal ranges and if there's some of these cuts behind and the red guys i'll open a little bit tighter it's just easy when you've got five or six tables running it's just easier like right okay who's behind me without having to look at the names right well it's all red behind me so or it's two red behind me and one green or it's just easier so yeah my tagging system is really important to me i have almost nobody untagged uh it's when you're multi-tabling it's just easier um when you're in the margin, when you're in like the parts of your range that sometimes open, sometimes don't, when the ones that you're mixing and you're opening, I don't mix by random number generator. I mix by who's to go behind me um, and who's like a different life difficult and who isn't. So, yeah, that's my tagging system. Uh, and this guy, I'm not really sure how he fits in because he's, he's got a big gap to his VP from PFR, but he's 3 betting 6%. So, I mean, I don't know. I think he could be inaccurately tagged. Maybe he should be orange. But anyway, he is what he is. We three bet him to 15 bigs. We pick up a cold call from the big blind. Um, and we flop trips and we just run this one through because there's nothing much to see here, I don't think. Uh, we turn. I guess there is something to see here because we haven't checked the turn. So we see bet like really small on the flop, like quarter pot. Do we need to be doing that against the 74 0? Probably not, but he probably doesn't have an ace either. Uh, I don't want to check. I want to start building the pot and 
a bit small enough that hopefully he just has random floats, I guess. Um, so we do bet quarter pot. Turn to five, so we now have like an unbeatable hand and it's really hard for him to have anything he's going to want to continue calling with the double paired board. Because you would imagine flush draws are folding. Hang on, my phone's ringing. It's fucking uncanny how often my phone rings when I'm doing videos. Yeah, so where were we? Um, yeah, I don't think he, maybe he continued with flush draws. On double paired boards, just going to check it over to him. Hope he bets. If he doesn't, then maybe we try and represent some bluffs on the river, uh, which we almost never have on these boards. It's certainly not against the 74 0, but he maybe doesn't know that. Anyways, he just decides to bet full pot, and I'm like, okay, chop, chop. In it goes, chop it up. Maybe we hit a king and, and win the lot. Um, and he just had deuces, you know. He just saw my check on the turn as weakness and decided to try and turn deuces into a bluff. And then when I went all in, I guess, tried to hit a non-existent out. Either way, it was very pleasant. On to the next one. We have two queens. We have a 35-19 Raising from the cutoff. Have a 79 slash 7 calling in the small blind. Squeeze it up to almost 16 big blinds. Get a call and a fold. Uh, this guy um yeah, I'm familiar with him. He's he tries hard to win pots, shall we say. He does try hard to win pots. He's I think he thinks he's good. I mean, he's not, but I think he thinks he's good. Um, yeah, it's just my read on him is he's probably someone at 35 19, probably somebody who just gets a bit out of line. I don't know. It's, it's hard to describe. Well, without being unflattering, it's hard to describe, and I'm not going to be unflattering. So, yeah, I just think he's shit and aggressive. Um, we check it on over to him on the flop. Hopefully, he will. Um, Take a stab on this board texture. He doesn't, sadly. Five on the turn. So we decide to go with just a large bet. It's going to go big, big here. Hopefully he's got, like, something he can call down with. Pocket nines, pocket eights, etc. Um, he decides to go all in. And I was like, shit, we let him get there. I mean, obviously we're never folding. Um, so we call. And he had that, and yeah, I have no idea what he's doing there. Literally no idea what he's doing there. Pre-flop, fine. Flop, probably okay, but, you know, against my range, maybe he can just stab smallish. Um, turn, fuck knows. Well, it's trying to represent it. Better than his, but yeah, anyways, that's it. We're not going to be too uncomplimentary, so we'll just move along and be happy that that thing happened. Yeah, here we've got the King 10 suit. You just notice that we've started raising to 3x. Um, I don't really see the point. In, I've been wrestling with this for a while between like that 2.5x is just like the bog standard shit mega open size these days, isn't it? And I've been doing it for a long time. But uh, part of the reason for 2.5xing is um, because we're playing games usually where there's like more three betting. So we want to um, give ourselves like we want our opponents to three bet smaller versus our smaller open size so we can defend versus more three bets and also save money versus like three bets when we're opening and folding. But um, when you're playing in games where your game's selecting well and you're not facing many three bets, then I think the 2.5x becomes kind of redundant. And I think 3x or even pot even 4x versus the right i mean against these two guys 66 28 and 60 zero there's no reason why we can't just go 4x here as well uh in my opinion uh but we're toying with 3x for the time being a little bit of like 3.5x um two uh we've kind of we've ditched to 2.5x if i'm at a table where i think i've got to start 2.5xing that is a trigger for me to be like well is this table any good because the only time i'm going to be doing that is if there's two like aggro regs at the table to go behind me. And if I'm at a table where I've got two aggro regs behind me, then I just shouldn't be at that table. Um, so yeah, we're 3xing. We get a call from the 6628 guy. We flop ourselves a top pair. We get led into. We raise. 
Nikki Coles. Turning to Deuce of Hearts. Beautiful card to see. You know, when, when we get led into on this flop against this player, raising for value is entirely appropriate. When he calls, you start to get, oh, this is maybe getting a bit dicey, but obviously we'll still be way ahead of his range. So it's nice to turn the heart to give yourself some additional equity. Check. We decide to continue betting. This would be thin against a lot of players. Very thin. Oh, it, it's much less thin against a 66-28, he calls. Um, we do have a flush. And now the question is just how much value do we go for here? Um, we haven't quite managed this pot correctly. So, you know, we'd probably, in an ideal world, now we've ridden a flush, we'd like to have, like, a better SPR. But I think on the turn, our hand doesn't warrant betting much bigger than what we bet. Um, you know, we could bet bigger here to set up a river shove. But at the time, I wasn't thinking of maybe, do we want to shove rivers? Of course, if we hit a heart, we want to shove. But, uh, yeah, not done the greatest job of pot management here. But it's not terrible. He checks. We do just go all in. Unfortunately, we catch a call from our opponent who rivered us straight, which was pretty, pretty nice. Um, yeah, happy days. Here we have the king queen off. We get an aggro fish opening under the gun. We get super passive whale calling. We squeeze it up to 11. Um, this size is. Probably too small, I guess, but I don't mind very much. We're not going to get four bet very often. Um, but if we do, then we're not going to call it off with this hand. So I don't mind going a little bit smaller. If I had a, this is like me trying to exploit this these types of players. Whereas um, you know, this job does a good enough job of like thinning the field a little bit. Um, how, how do I want to put this? Basically, if I had a good hand here, if I had pocket aces or pocket kings or something, this would have been raised to 14 bigs. Um, because we have a less good hand, um, we're just going to make it 11 bigs, basically. It's pretty fishy in many ways, but it, it does the job against against what we're trying to do. Uh, these guys are never going to pick up on this sort of sizing tell in squeeze pots. They're just not going to fucking do it. Um, stack sizes against the, like, the guy we're most likely to get action from here. And we don't need to go as big with our three bets and our squeezes. Yeah, this this could be a little bit shit by me. Uh, maybe we should just make it bigger. We just feel like, right, fine, I'm, I'm, I'm squeeze folding here. So let's just spend a little bit less. Because, you know, and then it, maybe maybe it's a mistake to, like, go bigger with aces here. I don't know. I could be on, I could be on, the, wrong, on the wrong thought process here. But um, it feels fine to me in game. Basically, for three bet folding against Wales, go a bit smaller, and when I'm th not three bet folding, go a little bit bigger. Um, it feels like that's really exploitable. But are these guys going to exploit it? Probably not. Uh, anyway, we get a call and a fold, so we managed to make the guy with the widest range fold. Sadly, uh, then we flop ourselves top pair. We check. I think we should probably bet here. But this guy does have like a 48. P Poker Tracker Ball calls it a float bet. Bet versus Miss C bet. So we're going to give him a chance to, to bet. Then we spring our trap. Our cunning, cunning trap. He calls. And he has the Queen Nine. So um, we're a little bit like... Why the coyote there against the road runner? We thought we'd spring a trap and then he'd basically painted a tunnel on the cliff edge and we'd run into what we thought was a tunnel and it was just smack bang into the cliff. Well, that's going to happen sometimes. If I had the same hand, if I had the same situation, you're going to play it the same way. Um, this guy just happened to flop really well this time and turn us over. Here we have two kings. We get some multi-way action. Again, we're checking this guy, a small sample size, but he has a um, eight times out of 12 when he's been checked to, he has bet. So we're trying to try to set up a check raise here. Sadly, he does not oblige us this time. Turns the queen. Time to just start betting big, I guess. Yeah, we pot it. He calls, he folds. A river. I mean, is that a good card? Is it not a good card? I remember this pot. This was only played yesterday evening, this pot. And I was like, ah, oh, fuck. 
you know, like at this point, this guy still has like I, I suspect plenty of ace x in his range. Uh, checks back flop with his good shot, calls turn with his good shot. Um, and my exact thought process, we, we end up checking here, I think. My exact thought process here was we block flushes with our king of hearts, we block king queen with our two kings. Um, and he, this guy goes all in, and I just decided to call. And whether we need to think about how relevant our blockers are against these types of players, or whether we're just like, fine, mate, we'll call. Um, I don't know. I mean, I'm just never going to fold this. But I don't know if I wasted like 10 seconds of my life considering our blocker effect. Um, maybe I just wasted 10 seconds of my life and maybe we just have to call here. He can certainly have some other missed draws. Obviously, he can have Queen X, he can have flushes, but he can have some missed draws too. Uh, and maybe I just didn't need to think about you know, the quality, the quality of our blockers, which are pretty good to be fair. Um, so we did call. And we didn't block the Queen Deuce, sadly. And, yeah, he didn't bet the flop, which is unfortunate, because we'd have got it all in on the flop, probably. And we still would have lost the hand, but at least we would have, um, we would have had some beautiful EV. We'd have had some Sklansky books. We ended up with no Reggie books or no Sklansky books there. Uh, here we've got the pocket aces. So when it just goes all in under the gun, this one's not going to be very interesting, is it? Um, yeah, whatever. And he's gone all in with the 10-5 offsuit because he just lost patience. Didn't want to play anymore, but fortunately for him, or unfortunately for him, the RNG decided, no, you are still playing, sir. And it gave him two pairs. And yeah, whatever. That was just in there to again to say, Getting good games, boys and girls. Um, got aces again. 79 slash 7 raised under the gun. It's always exciting when these guys raise under the gun because, yeah, they're super loose, but they're, they're really tight with the raising ranges. So you're like, cool, we're going to get to stack somebody because they're just never folding. Uh, we only make it nine here because of the two stack sizes. He's all in. We're not surprised by that in the slightest. He's all in. We're all in. Run up against the double king ten, and he just flops a flush. Wow, wow, wow! And um, it was still made a tiny bit of money on the hand, but yeah, never mind. Never mind. Here we have the king ten in the small blind. King ten suited. A very adventurous player opening. Again here, this should be a larger three bet against a reg. And there are some making this pool that do four X. This would be getting bumped up to sixteen with my three bet range. But um for the reasons we talked about earlier, we're just gonna make a smaller three bet versus recreational players. Obviously we're folding here to a four bet. Um he does just call though. Flop ourselves a king. We bet here because this guy looks on the more passive side post flop. I mean it's a small sample. Uh, but he doesn't look to have very much post up aggression at all. So rather than check to him, we just lead out. He calls. Um, I wonder why, why did I decide to check the turn? That seems strange. Maybe I thought it was too thin, but it's not too thin against this type of player. I don't know why I checked that turn. Uh, anyway, he bets our pot. We just call. This is weird. <laughs> We river two pairs. Check, he goes, oh, yeah, this is weird. I'm not sure why I've taken this line. I think we should just be bet, bet, bet here. Don't know why I've done this. Maybe there was a reasoning game that, you know, as the game was flowing, I had a reason for it, but I can't see any reason. In the cold light of Monday morning, I can't see a reason for taking this line. We call anyway. And we sucked out on the ace king. Uh, very lucky. Very lucky hand for us there. On to the next one. 5 4 suited. We open. We get min 3 bet by somebody playing 71 4. Um, yeah, we can't fold here, but he's playing 71 4. These, these two cards here that we can't see are just good ones. So we're going to need to get very lucky. Uh, and we do get lucky. We flop two pairs. We check to the guy who's got the over pair, or with the guy we suspect has got the over pair. 
in Betsy Calls. Now we spring our trap. We spring into action with our two pairs. Uh-oh, we get called here. Now we just need to see Brick Brick. We do not see Brick Brick. The six of blue is not the card we want to see. 76.31 in the pot. Check. We Do we bet here? Do we not bet? I mean, what three X's this guy have? Who knows? But he will have some. Um, one would imagine he's playing a 76 V pip. Is do we like just jam here to be, like protect against random ace X against one pair hands improving pastors? I don't know. I was in this spot and I didn't know whether to jam or whether to to just like pot control. Um, I, I still don't know what to do. I suspect jamming is probably better than doing what I did, which was checking. Then the river comes to seven, and now we can't put any more money in. He goes all in. We just have to fold here now, I think. I think we do. I hope I do. And I did fold. And this guy didn't have a stronger hand as I imagined with the ace jack. And this, <laughs> this guy had the queen three off. Uh, so, yeah, kind of unlucky that the board ran out the way it did, but not the end of the world. Um, it's just another all in and call. Boring. And he jammed open jam with the three nine suited. Getting good games, people. Ah, this one. I think I made a mistake in this hand too. I think I made a pretty big mistake in this hand as well. Uh, we open. This guy had been like, I think, gone all in two at the last three. Again, it, it might be the same guy who went, you know, who went all in earlier with the ten five. In fact, I think it is. But it might not be, but I think it is. Um, he just clearly didn't want to be playing anymore. Uh, we have two fives here. Um, the problem is, with this, is like, on the eye poker skin I play, it's pretty fucking high rake. And we are flipping at best here, probably. You know, maybe sometimes he's got, like, one under, one over. Maybe once in a while where we're slightly better than the flip. But the amount of times he's got that versus the amount of times he's just got like a maybe a slightly bigger pair or what have you. And I actually think I should just fold this. I think it's a mistake. I think with rake implications, uh, I think I should probably just fold this for 50 bigs. Um, I snap called at the time because I just it was this guy was just like fucking... You could tell he just didn't want to play anymore. And he was just all in, all in, all in, all in. Um, but I think... Mathematically, this is a mistake uh, because of the how high the rake is. But we did call. And we won because he had 6-3 off suit. Uh, so we actually you know, had him dominated. It's very rare you're going to have your know, opponent dominated here. And then a really super high rake environment. Then I don't think my call's too clever there, to be honest with you. Um, I'll keep nines. Everyone limps. We just make it 11x. When, when we get in spots like this, when everyone limps, I just like imagine that we're using that we're playing this like. And basically, I like right. Okay, well, we're treating this like it's a race pot because there's dead money in there. There's like one, two, three blinds, four and a half blinds. So I'll treat it like someone's opened. Uh, and then do I have a hand that I would normally three bet? If I do. If I have like one of my small blind three bet hands and I just make it like a three bet size. Um pick up a call on the fold. We check. He bets. We raise. I'm not sure why I've min raised to I say I am because he's got two all bigs. He calls. And he had ten seven off suit. So last hand of the video. We open the nines, we get shoved on by a 69 slash six. It's not an ideal scenario because this guy loves calling. So when he loves calling and all of a sudden he's ramming 70 big blinds. And again, I think this is a mistake. I think we should just fold this hand. Um, yeah, I think I got a little bit carried away with my calls here, that with the pocket fives we just talked about and this one. I think this should just be a fold. I mean, we're playing against someone who just loves to call. And, you know, it's like pre-flop race of six. And we ignore in the, like, the pre-flop three bet because um, it's such a small sample size. But I think this should just fold and move along. Again, mostly for rake implications. Um, I don't think we beat the rake 
with this call, but I called anyway because I'm a fucking idiot. Um, and the guy just had two jacks, and yeah, I think that's a bad call for me against this opponent type. If he was like 69, 45, 15, then that's a very different kettle of fish. But against someone playing 69, 6, who isn't aggressive at all, then I think like just flicking 70 bigs in pre flop with two jacks is a, not say it's a huge mistake, um, but I think it's definitely a mistake when we consider the impact of the rake on the skin I play on. Um, anyways, that's all that done. That's all the hands done. And this is how it's going for the month. Um, and I really can't complain too much, considering the month got off to like a very slow, frustrating start. Um, I think I bounced back well and recovered. I, we started the month playing 15 L, and fair enough, we didn't lose a lot of money. But it was disappointing. You know, we played like how many hours that is across the top. We played 15 hours of 15 L to start the month to lose um, two buy-ins, which is nothing. You know, ran a bit below EV. It's nothing, but it's like 15 hours where just just throw, not thrown away, but yeah, whatever. We played a little bit of speed poker. Didn't enjoy it very much. Um, and then we've mostly played 20 and L, which is this bottom one. And it's gone like really well at 20 and L. Slightly above EV and in the 20 and L streets. Um, but yeah, 11 big to 100. All of them just did. Really not going to complain about that. And yeah, hopefully we can continue this trend for the rest of the month and get, get somewhere near 900 to 1,000. Um, just the graph, ignore that purple line. That's just when there's a bit of cashing out on party. Um, yeah, so we're up to almost 600 up for the month, which considering like we'd, we'd wasted, well, not wasted, but we, we hadn't done anything for the first like week and a bit of the month. We hadn't made any money whatsoever. To have like the week we had last week was like really quite nice. And given that the news we got on Friday about uh, my wife losing some work, then it's it's nice that um, that I'm relatively confident. Unless the game states change, like if the skin disappears or something, now, there's always things that can happen in poker. Nothing's there forever. Uh, but whilst my current poker situation remains the way it is, um, yeah, then I don't think I don't think anything much is going to need to change, despite the fact we've lost like forty hours uh, of work a month, which is not insignificant money. Um, I think we're going to be fine still. I don't think we're going to need to. I don't think we're going to need to send the wife out to work more. And I'm desperately hoping that I'm not going to need to go out and get, get a boss again because I really like my work life balance. I like the fact that I'm completely in control of my own destiny. Um, so yeah, hopefully we can we can keep it that way. So this week, I did say last week there's going to be no videos this week, but, but because we're no longer working with the young lady, it means. Um, that I can spread my work out with the young man I support over the whole week um, because we didn't like having two different service users together at the same time. It felt like that wasn't really that good for them and it felt like to us that it just felt lazy to us to have two people at the same time. Um, so we never did it. We we never did it. We we tried to keep them separate so we could devote our full attention to whoever it was we were supporting. Anyways, now we're only supporting one person at the moment. It means we can spread our work out over the week. It's it, his mum likes that. Um, it doesn't matter to me whether we whether do it like longer hours on fewer days or um, less hours over more days. It literally makes no difference to me. So there maybe will be some videos this week because I'm not starting any day before eleven o'clock and. I'm, Bearing in mind it's 22 11 now, so I need to wrap this up and get going. Uh, there's potentially more videos this week, but all the videos going forward are probably going to be like this. Me just game select, game select, game select, ramming it down your throats. Um, the, the idea of me making strategy videos against decent regulars is fucking nonsense. Um, because A, I don't think that's a particularly good way to try, and make to try and make money at poker. And B, there's people out there that make far better content than I do in terms of, oh, this is how you play your range against fucking other type ranges from good players and on top of that it's just pretty fucking boring um so yeah this is going to be the format going forward um just me showing the the that the funny the interesting the wacky hands that we played against 
um, recreational players. Um, so, yeah, every time I get like 10 plus hands, that's probably the first chance I get to make a video, I'm going to do it. Uh, so, hopefully, there'll be some more this week because that means I've got in many interesting spots against Whoppers. Um, but, yeah, who knows? There won't be one tomorrow because I won't get enough volume in today. Maybe Wednesday, maybe Thursday, who knows? But we'll leave it there for now. 45 minutes, that's a lot of wobbling from an old knit. Um, yeah, and I need to really do, do need to get going. I need to go and put some socks on and, and get myself started for the morning. So we'll leave it there. Have a great week, everybody. As always, fuck the Tories and anyone that supports them. Uh, yeah, we'll see you next time. Take care, everybody, and bye-bye for now.